he's going to get a lot of events in the business. And come to the office and go over the road and buy vehicles and trucks to help us in the business. We'd like that to be a lot easier to have him on the license. Okay. For him to buy. In your name for the record, please. Don Mendoza Jr. Thank you. Why do you need him on uh, as, a, well, as an owner? On well, he's going to be an owner. No, he's going to be on the license that's on. But the, the, the property's in the trust. And, uh, he needs to be able to buy at auctions. It's a lot easier to have him on the process. And he's going to be buying? Well, yeah, vehicles. He's going to help him in the office. He's going to be a partner with us. So when okay. he goes in, he's going to buy them for you? Yeah. We're still, I'm staying home. We're staying home. We're not leaving. Do you have anything to say? Yes, I have something to say. <laughs> uh, I've been on that street 83 years. And it was nice. And now every time you turn around, you got cars with junk on it, this both sides of the street. And I look, my line is right next to his property. I look over. There's a bunch of cars in there that wasn't there last week. Now, full of cars. The fence is all broken down for over a year. Never been touched. I try to be nice to it, but now I want to do this, and I'm, I'm against it. Well, he's not changing his license. His license is still the same. They're just adding a name to it. But, but you do have some issues but, that... Right. We're not, he can't get any more or any less than he already has. We've already approved that. So the only thing we're doing is adding a name to his license. So nothing else is, we can't change anything yeah, else. Put another person in there, the things will change. Little by little, it'll change. They'll, they'll change. Well, not by, by law, he can't. By our variances in our, in our bylaws, he can't change it. So otherwise we can revoke his license. So we, if he's doing something wrong, his license can be revoked at any time. You know that. Okay. Does anybody else have anything they want to say? I, I have one more question. I think you're going to add my name to it. And we discussed that, and I'm going to fix the fence. I, I would like to fix it also. The property protected it also is looking good. Yeah, I mean, we, you, you're you here to do business in town, but you, have to, you also have to be a good neighbor and, and be... Well, a lot of his trees both the fence, but I right. don't know if I but, No, but let's not go down that yeah, road? Okay. Yeah. So but just as long as you can be yeah. good neighbors yeah, to I'm one not, another I'm and... Not wrong with him. I have no problem. Okay. Uh, He's going to fix the fence. fence. Yeah. Okay. That's the only time that fence that gets fixed is something like this come up. Okay. Other, but, than, that, other than that, they didn't get it left until it all fall apart. But we can't fix it if we don't know about it. So if you we have an issue, you know to call. We had no vehicles there at all on that side. Well, I told I them what the bottle. Okay, okay. We had no okay. vehicles there, so it was just woods we were looking at. Yeah. Now there's vehicles there. We put in, like a week ago, we put some vehicles. And that's what vehicles just... out there. So um, that's why the ceiling on it. It'll get fixed. Okay. What do you do with the vehicles? Some use auto parts. You use auto parts, right? You take them apart yeah. and so forth? Yeah. How many vehicles is your license good for? No restrictions. It's not a non restricted license. <coughs> Can you make a note of that? Mm -hmm. Thank you. It always has been unrestricted. Okay, Most licenses in the area are unrestricted. Licenses. Yeah. We've, 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 we, I think we've been pretty good. Okay. All around, and I'm not other than the fence. Um, we never make a lot of noises. We don't make any dust. We have shells and all the roadways, mm -hmm. so the front of the not make any dust. We don't make a lot of noises. We, we stick to our hours, 8 to 5, Saturdays, 8 to 2. And I think we've gotten along with everything. We just want to make sure yeah. it stays that How way. How long have you been doing business? 16 years. 16 17, years? 16, 17 years, yeah. yeah. Well, we like the town for each other. Does anybody else uh, appear to comment on <coughs> adding a name to DNM? Okay. I'll make a motion to approve to add the name to the license with the caveat that the fence gets fixed. There's no changes with the license at all. No, that yes. that we can't change the license uh, until it comes up right. for renewal. I'll second it. There was a motion made and seconded to approve the license <laughs> with the caveat that the fence is fixed and the license doesn't change in any way, shape, or form. And we remain the same. 
All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> so we you understand, if, fixed you, soon, huh? if you think you have problems, you can always come to the board. And if you think like fences need to be fixed, you think... It's going to be fixed now. And if it doesn't, you call me. Well, it better be. Okay. It will be. Thank you. We're all set. Thank you. We're all set. Thank you. <laughs> Next on our agenda is... You stay in? Yeah. Okay. Well, good. Okay. I like your company. Oh, you want me to go? No, I like your company. <laughs> I like your company. <laughs> Stay so you can keep us in line. <laughs> keep her in line. Oh, I'm glad you. I'm glad you clarified that. I'll tell friendly. <laughs> right next on our agenda is a discussion with all Algonquin Gas representatives regarding access to the Freetown property. Can you hear from Algonquin Gas? Could you identify yourselves, please? Sure. My name is Frank Gessner. I'm the project manager for land and rights of way for Algonquin Gas Transmission Company. With me is John Sheridan, who was our director, you know, for government relations. So I thank you for inviting us here this evening. I have uh, some handouts that I'd like to provide you. If you go to page two. Thank you. Um, or three. There are two properties that are owned by the town off of Van Record Lane that Algonquin is seeking um, permission to be served. Uh, this segment of the project, uh, the project is a joint venture project between Everson Morrison and National Grid and Algonquin Gas. It involves multiple states, New York, Connecticut, Massachusetts, various segments of pipeline along the Algonquin system uh, in New York and uh, Connecticut as well as the Mass will be taken up and replaced with a larger diameter pipeline. The reason for this is to increase peak day uh, supplies and also to increase the LNG storage capacity uh, along, the, along the system. The project is designed for 60% of the project supplies will go to electric generation uh, in New England. It will help overall, you know, lower the electricity rates uh, in here in New England. And it also provide additional supplies of natural gas, low cost natural gas, for you know local distribution companies like EverSource and National Grid. But before we can we haven't filed anything with FERC. I mean, FERC, obviously, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission has to approve the project. We haven't filed anything with them. We're looking to file what they call a pre-filing status in November, on November 2nd, you know, of this year. And we ask FERC for permission to begin the process, which is uh, we'll file our various resource reports for the entire project. and. They'll receive a, uh, a letter or with a docket number. When I receive that information, I'll send a letter to all our property owners in all the states, advising them, you know, what the docket number that we have filed. And then in January, there'll be uh, January, February, there'll be what we call open houses, which are part of the process. The open house is similar to the landowner information meetings that we held, uh, and I actually have one tonight. That we're holding. Except the big difference is that the information that we've been able to gather through survey, so property owners that come into these meetings want to know, geez, you know you're looking at a wide card. You know, is it always going to stay that wide or is it something that's going to be smaller? Now, where is the pipe going to be located? Is there a temporary workspace? Will my trees be removed? If so, is there something that you can do? So by asking for survey permission, and that's all we're asking for, we're not asking for rights in the land, we're not buying anything, mm -hmm. we're asking for permission to come on the property, the town-owned property, as well as private properties, and asking for permission to survey. And the survey consists of three pieces. One is the civil survey, the second one is the environmental survey. Civil survey being 
everybody knows. Civil survey is where they'll come out and they'll look for uh, the center line of the pipeline. They'll look to identify where the center line of the proposed pipeline would be. The environmental surveys, they look for any type of wetlands or any type of environmental uh, growth, more or less, plants and, and stuff like that, and I identify all that. The archaeologists will come out and they will look to see if there's any you know, type of archaeological work that they need to do. So they'll come on the property if they need to dig a hole. It's two feet, I think it's two feet square and two feet deep. They sift the, the uh, earth and look to see if there's any artifacts, and if they find nothing, they put it all back in the hole. So those are the three surveys. So in essence, you simply want to walk through the property, survey it, look at it, no removal of anything, no uh, uh, violence to plants or anything like that, or trees or anything. Mm. Nothing the only thing that they, they may do um, in when they do the civil work is to do some, it's this brush, because they do, if it's heavily wooded, they'll take a machete, they'll make, you know, they'll, they'll cut. Now, one of the things that we ask them is that if, if they're doing any cutting, you know, on the properties, they have to carry that stuff out. They just can't just leave a mess, you know, behind. They've got to clean up after themselves. And one thing that I do, you know, on all my projects is my right-of-way staff walk with the surveyor. So whether it's the civil crews or the environmental crews or the archaeological crews, there's a right-of-way person, you know, with them to ensure that we're respecting everybody's property as we're walking through. Any removal of any trees? Pardon me? Do you remove any trees during the survey? No. We do not cut any trees that are <laughs> greater than two inches in diameter. You know, if there's a particular tree that's on a private property or on a town property that is a landscape tree or something, we don't cut. I was about asking, do, uh, wooded trees. You're saying anything that's less two, than two less, inches you could cut? We could potentially cut. I'm not saying we would. Why would we, you cut that? If they were, if the surveyors were taking, using a transit and they were taking the line of sight and that particular tree was in the way, they would cut it. We discourage them from cutting anything. But I'm not going to stand here tonight and tell you absolutely they're not going to cut anything when they may have to cut you know, a particular branch or, you know, a something that's two inches or smaller, you know, through it. They understand that if they do cut it, they have to cut it flush with the ground so there's no punji stick, you know, meaning no sharp, you know, woodies, you know, sticking yeah. above the surface. Any stakes that they put in, sometimes property owners ask, you know, if you put a stake in, take the stake out. If I don't want it left behind. If you come in with your environmental flags, don't leave them behind. You put your environmental flags in, your GPS to data in, you take those flags with you when you leave. <coughs> the property is just the way it was when we left. Uh, some property owners ask for, you know, uh, notification. We want to know when you're coming on the property. You know, 48 hours or 24 hours. Or, that to yeah, because they may want to, you know, their home may be located close to where we're doing survey work. So if they're looking out their back window, they want to know who is that out. If it's us, we provide them with notification. If the town wanted notice, you know, on these properties, you know, that we're going to be out there a particular day on the permit, which I have a, a copy of uh, the two permits, you know, uh, with me. And it's just a standard form permit. Uh, it has attached with it the uh, uh, drawing, a, a reduced drawing as well as a description of the survey. So the last page of the permit describes the type of survey, the civil, and what's being done on civil, what's being done on the on environmental, what's being done on the archaeological. So there's three, three pages to the permit. What happens if a, if a uh, home, a landowner, mm -hmm. doesn't want you on the property? Then we stay off the property. It stays red. So how do you progress? You do it by mapping. You use mapping similar to the mapping that we have. The problem with that is if the property owner comes to the open house and says, well, where is it going to be on my property? I don't like it here. Can you move it a little bit? Can you save some trees? Well, without having survey permission, it's hard to answer their question. 
and we explain that to them. We've done that during the landowner information meetings where property owners came over and said, I have a standing group of trees right here. I really don't want to have to lose them because I'll have to look at my neighbor. Now, I didn't get into what the reasoning was, but I said, well, if we can make, you know, get survey permission, we can move the line. And you're looking at a study corridor that's 300 feet wide. So the line will move. So when you, you know, see this, uh, I'm looking at this, this map here, mm -hmm. and it shows two green lines, dotted green lines. That's the study corridor. That's 300 feet wide? Right. That's the study corridor. So you, it's, you can that's move? a total of, of 300 feet. That's correct. Across, okay. Do you, you have some flexibility moving the line, the red line, the pipeline, yes. in and out? So the pipeline's We've already, we've already looked at uh, some locations. I went out uh, this this last week, week. Great. So and I've already made some it. suggestions <laughs> to stay out of backyards, uh, to stay over on the cranberry barks, rather than removing any screening behind homes. So that way there, that's the screening okay. that's there can stay. But I'm, you know, one department, and that's the land department. You know, engineering takes a look at it, the environmentalists I have to look at it, so it's not just one person making the decision, we make recommendations to each other. I have another question. Sure. Uh, you're Jan, right? No, no, my name is Karen. Okay, Karen. Let me just, let's finish with these guys okay. and I'll give you a chance to Thank start. you very much. What I, what I want to ask you is that, uh, let's say, uh, you know, you progress at your own speed and so forth, and at some point you're going to get a federal permit. Yes. And yeah. if the feds give you the permit, what does that allow you to do? If the federal government provides us with a certificate of public convenience and necessity, then we can build the project. We so can what, build the pipeline. So what happens to somebody that doesn't want you running the, the pipe through their, their property? Okay. It's a very good question. I mean, we sit with every property owner. We let them know. We're trying to negotiate with you. We've made offers. We've had independent appraisers look at it. We had those same appraisers meet with the property owners, trying to come up with a value, you know, to purchase the easement interest. If we cannot, if it, we're just, it just doesn't happen, can the property, you know, be taken by eminent domain? The answer is yes. That's a last resort. And our projects that I've completed over my 45 years, you know, with the company, typically that ranges anywhere between 2 and 5%. Now, when we send final offer letters out, those number, those percentages are higher, but it, many property owners wait until they get that final offer. Now, are you actually taking the property, or are you just taking an easement? Only taking an easement interest. That's it. And how how wide of an area are you talking about? If you had to do that, if it's a 24 foot wide, uh, a 24 foot, a 24 inch diameter pipeline, uh, that would be a 50 foot permanent easement. Uh, there'd be 25 to 35 feet of temporary workspace. It's just temporary, so it's a temporary easement. So yes, that would be cleared as part of the project, but that 35 feet is, is allowed to go back and grow to, you know, what was there prior to, whether it was, uh, you know, whatever that was growing there before. Yeah, we on, don't replant on, it. On its own, you don't replant right, it. we don't replant it. So how, how much space are you gonna need once that temporary and the pipeline is in, how much space are you going to need to go up and down there? To clear? To keep clear. 50 feet. 25 on each side of the pipe. 25 on each side or 20 and 30. Until, at first they have to do the survey. You know, then that's when we have definitive answers to those, to those questions. You know, typically, I'm telling you, a 24 inch line is 50 feet. All right, if it's something smaller than that, uh, like a 20 inch or an eight inch line, you're down to 30 feet. But until we complete our survey work, you know, I wait for the engineers to come back to me because we have to put that in our filing. We have to justify why we need 50 feet, why we need the temporary workspace. FERC reviews all that information. A woman named Jane, Jan Macomber was a nice letter, and I thought that would be you. Now, this isn't an open meeting where everybody's going to speak about that. That's not what this meeting is designed for. But I will allow a couple of people to speak, and since you're chomping at the bit, <laughs> you got something to say. All right. My name is Karen Valandry, president of Hands Across the River Coalition, which uh, basically 
We are concerned about the health and safety of the Greater New Bedford area, which would include any plants which would have any type of material that could be toxic to people, uh, abutters and people in the general area and further. Um, I just wanted to make mention to you, if I may, that um, I don't want you to feel compelled that you have got to make a decision tonight for uh, permission to allow anyone to set foot on town-owned property. There is so much information about this project that needs to be disseminated to everyone. There also needs to be a public meeting for Freetown residents to give them a chance to air their concerns. So before going forward with any type of permission, and as you can see with the amount of material that you have been receiving tonight, you need the chance to be able to review this and uh, come to a more comfortable situation where you can make a decision at a, at a later time. Now, I just want to make mention with the research we've been doing, we're amazed at the size of these two LNG plants that they are proposing putting up. If you recall the gas tanks that are along Route 93 in the Boston area with the big stripes on them, those are 146 feet tall. The ones that they're proposing for Freetown, or Cushion, I should say, are approximately 177 feet tall. They're 150 feet wide. About that, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you have a lot of issues with the size of these tanks. They are proposed to be the largest in the northeast region. Any mistakes, any accidents, even the pipeline company, as we've heard, have a number of violations like 53, I believe it is? 59. 59 violations already. So any leaks, and it's important to know that any of this material leaking can travel for miles before it comes to an ignition site. At that point, it can ignite and then fire back to the source and cause a major issue. Now, if you Google uh, LNG tanks and safety issues back in 1944, there was a major explosion in Ohio. Number of people that died were injured, property and so forth and so on, with that size tank at that time. There was also something more recent in Staten Island, New York. So again, I just, uh, you know, we plea as an organization with you to, to review the materials that were presented to you tonight, and please allow some time for transparency of more information about the project, and please allow a public meeting for the Freetown residents to allow them to speak out and air their concerns about this project because this is a very big project, a very big project. So again, please don't decide or, or hastily decide tonight that you've got to approve anyone taking that first step on town-owned land at the start of this project. <coughs> There's still so much information that's got to be delivered. Thank you. Jan, would you like to speak? Yes, I would. Please. Um, I, too, Jan am concerned. Mac identify yourself. Jan Macumber. Um, I live on Keene Road, which is the proposed route for this to go down. Um, I'm concerned. From Freetown? I'm sorry? Are you from Freetown? Yes, thank you. Um, it's not only about the safety because of the size of these tanks, but when he says he's going to do sightings and only remove two-inch trees, I'd like to present you with a few pictures that I took on my property of the density of the trees that are in this area. I have 426 feet of frontage by 50 feet. That's a, a half acre of land that they will be taking. Um, I have not met with you, nor have you talked with me about eminent domain or um, buyouts, E's or buyouts or prices or anything like that. I have only been approached by the people that are going to be doing the surveying and they indeed told me that they would cut trees down if they are in the path of the uh, surveying line. There are, there's not much more than six inches of area that wouldn't be within uh, a sight line. They're going to cut trees on both the town property and on my property that because there's no path, there's no open area, there's no sight, sight line on its property. As you can see, all the ferns that are in the, the, the property, 
that's all wetland. On both sides of the road of King Road is wetland. I don't know how they could get a, a proper approval to go down that way on either side of the road. It's just, I could not build a house on that property because it was wetlands. And I was told that they have different rules that they go by for FERC, that they can take wetlands and do what they want with them. That, that's the federal permit side. They're I, simply asking for us to walk in the property. Well, it, it leads to this. I understand. And Instead you need to be aware of what's going to happen. <laughs> I was very disappointed to see that there was no representation from Freetown at the Acushnet meeting. And um, I feel that the people of Freetown don't realize the magnitude of this because nobody's talking about it. I live three miles from in Freetown. Yeah. The pipeline goes down my street. Isn't it? The pipeline is already down your street. Yep, exactly. Okay. It's not this 24 inch line, and it doesn't lead to a 250 foot wide by 170 foot tall two tanks. That's a huge, huge. That end of the that end of these many, many steps is way beyond what a selectman in Freetown can ever hope to do one way or the other. But when you, were four you need to be aware. Oh, we are. You need to know the, the dangers of this. I understand. You need to know of the 20,000 leaks on the line that already exists. Where's that line that you're talking about? This line? 20,000 leaks in Massachusetts. That's how many leaks there are on one line. On one line. Is, is it the same pipeline we're talking about? No, they're probably referring to local distribution company lines. We're not talking about high pressure lines on the Algonquin system. If those lines had been maintained, there would not be leaks in them. What is the maintaining it's, procedures? It, you need to be talking about the Algonquin system, not about local distribution company. I mean, there's two different, you know, pipelines, two different histories. But the same so outcome. I, no. If the two, if, okay. if you talk about Algonquin's lines, they've been here. I'm not going to have a debate between people here. This was, you know, if you, you, you listen to the gentleman's presentation, you certainly enjoyed your presentation also. Could he answer the question how they can do a sight line in that dense of a populate well, area? Well, actually, that's not what this article is about. They're simply here looking to do a survey. That's not something I can see certainly getting into that at some particular point in time mm -hmm. because this is, uh, like you said, it's, it's one step of a, a thousand step program probably. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure this will go on forever. I think your federal permit, you're requesting it around 2018 or something like that. Correct. Right. And uh, that was, uh, you know, that's a few years down the line. So this kind of conversations that you're anticipating. I'm sure it will come up over and over again, and I'm sure there will be many, many meetings that we can all attend as concerned citizens. But uh, they simply asked this particular step for the tenth approval from the town to pretty much walk in our property. Where is the property in Freetown? It's off of Keene Road. It's, it's between, it's, it looks like to me it's it's between uh, Nice, uh, uh, what is it, Nice Lane? And uh, nice. at Route 18, and Route 18, nice lane Route 18. It's three little, the two small parcels. For us, it's just a small little piece of land. Yeah. And I, I do value your input and your concerns. But what's in front of the board tonight is, is simply a permitting process to look at the land. And although we all have concerns, uh, I think the board wants to discuss this and, and uh, your if opinions, it, fellow board members. If it's between Nye's Lane and Route 18, how does that fall against King Road? Now, down Lane and it looks to me like it's down Ann Records Lane and it takes a right on the key and so goes right down Nessa's Lane. How will you make the turn at Ann Records Lane to go down um, when there's a house right at the end of that road? That's why we're asking for permission to survey. 
until we walk on the properties and complete our survey work, you know, we will not be able to put a line on paper. Right now, what you see is the center line of a corridor yeah. and a study corridor. That's all you see. This type of information will be available to everybody at some point. This is the, the actual, what you have in front of you is the maps that were used for the landowner information meetings. And what I've been pushing hard for is to get the survey so that we can collect the information and get that on the next set of maps that will be used for the next meetings, which are going to be held in January and February of, you know, 216 next year. You guys and looking for the shortest way? Is that what you're doing? Are you looking for the shortest route? What, all right. We're looking for a route that is balanced. When I say balanced, you know, we look at not only the landowner impacts, you know, to screening properties, we look at the environmental impacts, and we look at the constructability. So it's not necessarily the short, uh, shortest route, but it's a route that takes all of that into consideration. Would you go down a roadway? Uh, this project actually does go down the roadway. It goes down, uh, right now we're looking at going down. And reconciling? Uh, right. And then what about when you get to Keene Road, right down the center of Keene Road? Because that runs right into Nestle's Lane. That's straight. correct. Right on that road, that's what we're looking at is going construction right down that road. So why would you want to cross other people's property then? If you've got Coming from our existing pipeline, from our existing uh, uh, G, uh, G1 lines, yeah. uh, which are 20 and our Rounds Hill Drive. Pardon me? Up on Rounds Hill Drive. Right. That's right. exactly right. So we'll be tying in there. And then, <clears throat> so to, to get from that point down, uh, we would cross, you know, private lands. Right, but the, pe the people, you, you, Keen Road. She, she's on Keene Road. I mean, if you went right down the center of Keene Road, it's not going to affect her property. Well, that's why, if, if I can, I'll meet with you after tonight, uh, after we leave, we can go over there, and I'll go over the drawings with you, and maybe give you some assurances of, you know, what we're looking at. Right, right now it's 50 feet in my front yard. Okay. Let's take a look at that before you leave the scene. Okay. All right. So I think maybe this first step one is necessary, so everybody needs to know. Can I? Absolutely. Thanks. I'm going to, if you don't mind, I'm going to take this in steps. That's how I do things. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that this is your first step, right? That's but correct. I have an issue with the first step. I don't have an issue with you walking on the property or doing your survey. I have an issue, um, first of all, I'm not sure, if, and I wish the town administrator were here, but he's not, I'm not sure if our attorneys have looked at this, but it's kind of vague when you say expressly subject to the condition that the town of Freetown are paid for any and all damages to the property or crops that may be directly caused by such activities. That's very vague, vague to me. That, that, that means nothing. That's There's no monetary amount on here. There's no what specific damages you are going to cover or not cover. There's, this is just a blanket statement that means nothing to me. Sorry. It's, okay, it's, it's it's a standard form. Right. All right, and some property owners sign it. Some property owners hand it to their attorneys. Uh, you know, I mean, obviously, if we damage something on the property, you know, we're responsible for it. So by you taking it and you know having you know town council look at it, I don't have a problem with that. When I look at this red line, you're not even going the, that that red line, that proposed line that you've got in there. And I know it's you know just a projection, mm -hmm. but it doesn't even come across our property. It doesn't come across our property. You know, right? But where, like I started. We're looking at a 300-foot corridor. All right. At the end of the day, it may not hit you. And by doing the survey work, and when the survey work is complete, there is a letter that comes out from me that says we completed our work. This is how we, you know, your property is no longer impacted. You are considered an abutter to the project. You'll still get information from the project because you're abutting the project. But right now, there's nobody that's directly affected, and there's nobody that's abutting the project. Put them all in one. I think ours is good. May I? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to make a motion to um, put this off for two weeks. Um, I'd like our town council, Jonathan Silverstein, to take a look at this and give us his recommendations on this. Um, this does not open up the gateway to have everybody from the woodwork come out and talk at, at our next meeting against this. 
This is so we can ensure that the town of Freetown is protected and its residents are protected and that we can get some sort of um, direction from town council. That's Second. my that's my motion. Second. Have a motion made and seconded to address this process with our town council. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So we're going to give this information. It's pretty much the policy of the board. We, we very rarely vote on anything that's put in front of us on the same day. I'm going to hand you my card. Thank you. Thank you. All right. In case town council has it. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you, Dan. Okay. Thank you. Sir. Bye, honey. Always. Frank, See that halo? I have a halo. Frank, <laughs> All right, thank you. You, you must have get arrested anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I got a second? I do. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. A little frustrating. Thank you. That's right. <laughs> Conservation Commission too with the wetlands. And yeah, you made your intentions yeah, I'm, I'm known. Just oh, yes, the model yes. from Fall River. President of the Coalition for Responsible Siting of LNG Facilities. And the one quote that I can leave you with is what Gordon Shearer, the CEO of Weaver's Cove Energy said when one of my members asked him if there was ever a leak or the, or the tank was compromised, what would happen? And he said, as we quoted him, uh, you'd have, I guess we'd have the world's largest Roman candle. Yeah. We put it on our website. How could he deny it? There were 150 people in the room. Thank Just want to leave you with that. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Next on our agenda. We had some some representatives from uh, yeah. 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 Hi, how are you? Nice Good. to see you again. Good to see you again. Yeah. Thank you. Nice to see you again. Hello. Nice to see you again. So we're going to talk about that host agreement, perhaps sign it. Here to answer any questions. Um, it's been it's been given to town council. It's been yes. worked on and worked over. Um, I don't have any concerns right now. When are you starting? So this is uh, one step along the process. Uh, we're working through finalizing the preliminary site plan to get that in front of planning board. Um, we're scheduled to close by the end of the year. Uh, and we'll begin construction uh, after receiving building permits. Uh, so when do you go to the planning board? Uh, right now we're showing planning board in November. Uh, once we get through, we work through, uh, we had a, some site considerations to deal with um, that we got through, finally got the footprint set on the building, and now we're working through the preliminary site plan to get in front of the planning board. And you know during site plan review, any other conditions, I mean this, this was Agreement is something totally different. Than right. This is, this is so. I just yeah, want. Yeah. I don't want you to think you're scot free. No, 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 not at all. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. Well, yeah, it's, 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 yeah, it's, it's part okay. of the process. But this, for us, at least, uh, pins down that piece. It's one step. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's always one step. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna say, that that I feel sorry. like we're we're on step forty, but this is a, it's a, a right. big step for us um, to get this piece down and you know, kind of establish that. Thank God the number of your company is in America. All right, so we have a motion. I'll motion second made, it. Uh, motion made and seconded to sign the uh, post agreement. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Do you split? So we have it to sign? I have two copies that are signed and notarized from our side. We'll leave them with you. They have to yeah, be notarized. Have to and then I have a an affidavit, minutes designated me the signer. Okay. But 
and they were notarized in Colorado. And you'll do, be doing a little bit of work for the site plan? Right, the, okay. the local permitting, correct. And I've been in touch with uh, planning. Um, and you looked at that, I don't know if you remember last yep. time, you mentioned the expedited permitting process. Was it? Yeah, and this site is one of them. Uh, but in looking You're at welcome. it, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not, I'm not sure we're going to go that route. It's, it's, we're still considering it because there are some added steps to go with that expedited route. Um, then they, once you do that, then they have 180 days to make a decision. But in speaking with planning, there's a possibility we may get that decision in 180 days, anyways. So we don't have to do those initial steps. So we're still weigh all your options. Uh, right, exactly. <laughs> Okay. She's waiting yeah, on the thank you. <laughs> that was uh, worth the flight back, right. sure. Oh, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. I've got some Stop stuff up get in some there. seafood on your way home. Absolutely. Take your family home lobster. <laughs> thank you. Right, very good. Thank you very much. We'll see you again. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. We'll see you soon. Bye. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Have a good night. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, too. Good. And you? Okay. We'll take a five-minute recess.